let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Eric Anderson. I am both the league administrator for the National Air Rifle League, as well as the owner and eventer of the Orion Scoring System. And you are here with us for the coaches meeting for the 2020 season of the National Air Rifle League, uh, National Air Rifle New Shooter League. Welcome and thank you. All right, a couple of logistics as we get started. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I will try to keep this to about 30 minutes, and that will depend on the questions that you have. Uh, today's topics will be specific to the New Shooter League. If you have questions that are specific about how to use Orion, if you have questions about uh, something that's very specific geared to, to your account, probably will not be able to get to those today just because we are going to try to stay on topic uh, specifically to, for the uh, RFA League. I do encourage you throughout uh, the coaches meeting to ask questions, to make comments. Uh, your YouTube uh, web browser will have a, a chat box and please use the chat box to ask any of your questions. Either a moderator will be able to answer your question or I will uh, get to your question uh, once, I, once I have a free moment. Uh, today's webinar as well as the PDF slides will be available for download. Uh, there are a lot of coaches who can't attend live so we will make this available to them. And with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the couple of statistics for this year's league, uh, the New Shooter League, this is the third season for the New Shooter League. We have 61 registered teams. Uh, that is a, a new high for us. And with that, uh, 573 athletes, uh, estimated athletes, will be participating in this year's league. Uh, we have representations from 30 different states, plus Guam. We have one school from Guam. And uh, Texas leads all the states with uh, seven teams, and North Carolina has five. Florida and Virginia each have four teams in this year's New Shooter League. Uh, for those of you who participated in 2019, uh, we really only have one change uh, from last year, and that is we are going to use decimal scoring. And there's a couple reasons for this, uh, but the biggest reason is after the uh, Air Rifle League that we had in the fall, the main Air Rifle League, we surveyed you, the coaches, if you wanted to adopt decimal scoring for the league. And the response was pretty, uh, pretty positive. 54% uh, of the coaches were in favor of adopting decimal scoring uh, compared to 27% who were opposed to it. Uh, so basically a two to one ratio with uh, the other coaches having a, a no opinion on, on the matter. So that a little hard, a little hard to ignore. Um, <clears throat> There are other reasons for adopting uh, decimal scoring, uh, namely, the, uh, the I do have a misprint here. Misprint here, the National Three Position RFL Council rules that we uh, run under now permit decimal scoring. Uh, decimal scoring has also been adopted by both USA Shooting and the ISSF since 2013, and they are, of course, the national governing body and the international governing body for the sport. And more qualitatively, uh, decimal scoring is seen as a more uh, modern and fair way to uh, score targets. Uh, so this is why uh, this league that we will be using uh, decimal scoring uh, for the season. And for those of you who are familiar with the main Air Rifle League that we run in the fall, there are a couple differences which I will go ahead and point out. Uh, the New Shooter League is first and foremost for new shooters. And I will get to what that, uh, how we define that uh, in, a, in a slide or two. Uh, the schedule is also slightly different. In the New Shooter League, it is a eight game schedule over 10 weeks. Uh, that means you'll have, uh, your team will have two bye weeks during the season. Uh, the schedule is dynamic. Actually, that's kind of the same with the main RFL League. Um, and in the New Shooter League, there is no conferences. Everybody competes under the same conference. Uh, it's the same same group of uh, teams no matter what. Uh, there is no postseason in the New Shooter League. And one of my favorite parts about the New Shooter League is how we have comp uh, how we award athletes at the end of the season, uh, award teams. And we make equal emphasis on the competition, participation, and uh, improvement. 
And again, uh, towards the end of uh, the slide deck, I do have a slide specifically on the awards, uh, so we'll go into that in more detail uh, in a few moments. All right, so let's talk about uh, the el eligibility of your athletes. Uh, so again, this is the new, sh new shooter league. Um, they do have to be eligible under the national three position three position RFO rules, which is the rule book that we abide by, that we run the league under, which basically means your athletes have to be high school age or younger. Uh, they can be in junior high school if they, if they want to, they just have to be high school age or younger. Um, this is for sporter class athletes only. Uh, I would love to run something under the precision class. There just isn't the numbers to support that. Uh, so for the new shooter league, it is sporter class only. And finally, um, they have to be new shooters. And we do have a very specific definition as to what a new shooter is. And that is, they have, ha excuse me, their first competition, the athlete's first competition had for either air rifle or small bore rifle has to be on or after the 1st of August 2019, which we chose specifically because it more or less corresponds to the uh, uh, school year. Um, we do have exceptions if an athlete previously shot in a BB gun, air pistol, high power rifle competition. Those in and of themselves don't disqualify them for a new shooter status. Uh, it is specific for an air rifle competition or a small bore rifle competition. Uh, one additional note on this, uh, I have had uh, certain coaches uh, contact me asking me uh, how come we don't define it as uh, within a year of when they started shooting. And the, the answer is actually pretty um, uh, pretty simple. By defining it by the first competition, it is quantifiable. It is something that we can look up. Uh, both we here at Orion have a very large uh, uh, competition database. We also work very closely with the civilian marksmanship program. So if an athlete competed before this date, we have the database, we would know about it. Uh, so it is quantifiable. So that's why we chose this definition. All right, uh, the season is broken up into two parts. Uh, the preseason, which is going on now and lasts through the end of this week uh, on Sunday. Uh, if you have already had the opportunity to participate in the uh, preseason, great. We really recommend it. Um, if uh, you haven't been able to compete in the preseason, it is very much a uh, recommendation, especially if you are new to the league. Uh, so please... Um, it is your opportunity to participate in a league type game, but without uh, your scores counting in the season itself. Um, and then during the regular season, which starts a week from yesterday, uh, it is a 10 week season. Most, um, most weeks, your team will have exactly one game, but you'll have two weeks that you have uh, bye weeks. When you registered, you were able to request specific bye weeks. And as long as we have that information ahead of the time, we're actually pretty good about uh, honoring your requests. Um, for those of you who haven't requested bye weeks, you still have the opportunity. If you go back to the original uh, registration email, there is a link there that you can click on to update your registration, including your bye week requests. And uh, the schedule during the regular season is dyna dynamic, and I will talk about that in a slide or two. Uh, I will pause for a moment because we did get a question with respect to athletes who are in the 7th and 8th grades. Uh, yes, um, under the uh, council rulebook, uh, eligible athletes just have to be high school age or younger. So you, if you have athletes who are in the 7th or 8th grade, they are absolutely um uh, eligible to compete in the uh, new shooter league. Uh, so yes. All right, uh, with that, I will continue on. And again, uh, for those of you who do ha have questions, please use the YouTube chat feature. Uh, uh, either a moderator or myself will get to your questions as soon as we are able to. All right, uh, returning to the uh, 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 slide deck. Uh, the game, uh, there is one game each week, and the week is defined as Monday through Sunday. 
And what that means is the earliest you can uh, shoot your game each week is going to be on Monday, and your scores have to be turned in Sunday at midnight. Uh, the course of fire for a game is a 3 by 10 And again, new this season, we will be scoring everything in decimal scoring, uh, de de decimal, decimal values. Um, all games are virtual, which means both you and the team that you're going to compete with each week will shoot from your home range. Um, and it could be, uh, 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 you know, could be a team that's down the street, or it could be a team that's uh, in Hawaii or Guam, Alaska, what have you. Um, all games are governed by the National Standard 3, three Position Air Rifle Rules. For those of you who may not be familiar with the rules, uh, there is a link to the rulebook off of the uh, National League's uh, website. And we will also be providing to each of the coaches a range officer command script. Uh, we'll be sending that out on Friday and we'll get to you er early next week. And we also have that available uh, on our website as well as a PDF file. And then finally, uh, for each game, the scoring will be done electronically. Uh, there's, there's no protest uh, shot values allowed. And uh, once again, I'm going to pause for just a moment. There was a question with respect to the uh, uh, preseason pre -season match. And it looks like it's kind of a, a technical question, and uh, one of our moderators are already did, did get it. If you are participating in the preseason match, and again, that's something that we do recommend, and something doesn't look right with your scores, please contact our offices. Um, one, the preseason match does give us the opportunity to work with you one-on-one -on -one before the league starts, so it's a, our opportunity to make sure everything is set up on your side. And um, by calling us, does by calling us uh, for technical questions, does give us the opportunity to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. All right, uh, let's return to the slide deck, and with respect to the game, uh, so once again the the game is scheduled each week. You have a game and scheduled between Monday and Wednesday. You, as the coach, one of your responsibilities is to schedule your team to shoot sometime during that week. Um, and I leave it up to the coach to, des to decide this. Every uh, every club has slightly different local restrictions that you have. You may only have access to the range one day of the week. You may have, you know, baseball practice for half of your teams on some of the days. I leave it up to you to decide when. Uh, to schedule your team to shoot. Now, with that said, there's a couple of different a uh, couple of things to highlight. One, all members of your team do not have to participate on the same day. In the uh, first uh, first chart that I have above, I have this fictional team of four athletes, and we see here that two of your athletes, Matias and Camila, uh, are shooting on Tuesday. And your other two athletes, Sophia and Mariana, are shooting on Thursday. That is perfectly acceptable. Uh, your team may shoot on separate days. Now, what is not allowed under league rules is for your athletes to participate on uh, in the league more than once. Uh, there's absolutely nothing in the, in, in the rules that permit that. Um, that, that would be illegal. Uh, so your athletes can shoot on separate days, but they may only participate in the league once. Um, there is no, no re-entry option for the league. All right, uh, scheduling. Uh, the way that we do scheduling is a process that we call dynamic scheduling. Um, the first two weeks of the league, which we will announce on Thursday, this Thursday, is 100% 100 completely random. Uh, you might get scheduled to compete against um, Ozark and Zion Benton the first two weeks, w which case, good luck to you. Uh, or you might get scheduled to compete against uh, two very, um, uh, you know, teams that are being developed. Um, it is random. Uh, that's that's all there is to, to the first two weeks of the league. After the first two weeks, uh, the scheduling, we we start to employ the dynamic scheduling. And what this means is we try to schedule your team with another team that has roughly the same skill level. Uh, we base that on what we call league points. Um, and the way that we release the schedule is the schedule for the third week is based on scores from the first week, which we announce after the first week. The schedule for the fourth week is based on scores from weeks one and two, which we also announce after the second week. And this pattern goes on throughout the course of the league. Now, again, dynamic scheduling has two 
almost contradictory goals to itself. Uh, yes, we do try to schedule you against a team that have has a similar skill level, but we also try to maintain a diversity of competition. What that means is we don't want the same teams constantly competing against themselves. Uh, so sometimes these uh, goals are not exactly um, in line with each other. Uh, so uh, you know we we do have these we, we we do have these goals in mind, and that's this is how we. This is how we're doing the scheduling. Uh, one other note, uh, teams with two or more DNSs, which is did not start, they did not turn a score in for a week, will not be scheduled uh, going forward in, in the league. Um, it's unfair uh, to teams if you don't turn in the scores. So if you do that twice, we just drop you from the league. And it's just not fair to, to the other teams in the league who are participating. All right, rankings. Rankings during the league are based on what we call league points. This, is, again, is also how we are doing the um, uh, sc scheduling. Um, league points is the sum of your seasonal average, plus you basically get bonus points for each win that your team team earns. Uh, ten, ten bonus points uh, for each win, um, zero points if you, if you have the loss for the week. And then you have negative points if you have a DNS, a did not start, you did not turn in a score, and then um, if your team gets disqualified, hopefully that does not happen, uh, there is a more severe penalty uh, for that disqualification. And then if there is uh, teams with an equal number of league points, we do have um, listed in the league program how the ties are broken. Uh, the first tiebreaker is the highest number of wins. The second tiebreaker is by the highest score fired during the season, and so on and so on. But the important thing to, to recognize here is that league points is the sum of your average plus, in effect, bonus points for each win that your team earns. All right, how to participate. Uh, there's a couple of um, pieces of information. Um, that I can give you to learn how to participate in the league itself. Uh, first of all, um, you are all logged on to YouTube, and in our YouTube channel, we have a specific video about participating in league games. If you have not had the opportunity to view that video, I strongly encourage you to do so. Um, for those of you who have, thank you. I know it has gotten quite a few uh, good, uh, uh, good comments uh, for those of you who have viewed it. Second, uh, we will be sending out the instructions and range command manual to each of the coaches uh, this week. If you want a PDF version of it, it is also available on our website, uh, nationalleagues.com. Uh, but we will uh, uh, send a hard copy, which has all of the range commands, uh, to you this week. Uh, please remember that uh, each week your game for the week will be released uh, by about uh, noon each Monday. Uh, it does take us a little bit of time each week to um, <laughs> uh, Monday mornings to get this stuff released, so please be patient. Uh, but we do try to have everything released by noon on Monday. And again, you have until Sunday to uh, 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 participate and turn in your scores. As a reminder, it is a best practice, and what we recommend it, as the coach, prepare the targets ahead of time and then um, hand them out to your athletes prior to firing. And then once after each stage the targets are shot, collect them immediately uh, from your athletes. Very, very important, after, your, uh, after you have shot, after you have scanned and scored your targets, extremely important that you check that your scores got uploaded correctly. Uh, the way that you do this, uh, inside of Orion there is a globe icon. When you click on that globe icon, it opens up the, uh, the what we call the game page on our result center page, and you want to make sure that your scores are listed as well as each athlete that uh, was on your team was listed. If you see this information on the website on the result center, then your scores were successfully uploaded. I'm going to pause for just a moment because there is a question, so give me a moment as I read this. Uh, 
Uh, one question here was with respect to um, uh, uh, barcode labels. Um, barcode, barcode labels, we do strongly recommend. It just makes uh, the statistical officer's job easier. Not required, but we do recommend it. If For those of you who have been um, particip participating in the league for a couple of years, you may have remembered about uh, a year and a half ago during the fall leagues, we did require uh, color-coded uh, barcode labels. We no longer do that. Um, after that season, we determined it was just not worth it. It was more of a hassle. Uh, so barcode labels are not required, but we do strongly recommend using them. They do make your life easier. And there's another question in response to uh, uh, participation. Um, so again, we do have a preseason competition that you are eligible to compete in. Um, for those of you who do not know, you can actually participate in the preseason multiple times. If you want to do that, let us know. We can let you enter. And uh, we also have uh, separately what we call monthly virtual matches, um, which are outside of the league, but are another competition that uh, you may participate in. All right, uh, returning to the uh, slide deck one, one more time. Um, so once again, each week you want to make sure that your scores do get turned in correctly. The first place that you do that is to click on the globe icon and view your scores within the uh, result center itself. Second, um, each Friday we will be sending out an email to you with your team's score. This is meant as a reminder and a uh, uh, that your, your scores are all available and you can see what we have in the system at that time. Of course, if your team is not scheduled to shoot until Saturday and you see this email on Friday, it's going to say that you have a score of zero, but that's expected since you haven't shot. Uh, so, um, but if you shot on Tuesday and you get this email on Friday and it shows you a score of zero, something is wrong. Something did not get entered correctly. And if you have that, you know, check your system and give us a call and we will try to help you um, make sure your scores do get uploaded correctly. Very, very important. I probably said this a dozen times already, but I'm going to say it one more time here and probably a few more times. Uh, the scores are due Sunday at midnight. Um, if you turn in your scores after that, uh, they cannot be accepted. Uh, scores are due Sunday at midnight. Very, very important that all coaches uh, re remember that uh, throughout the league. Now, we do have a couple of special circumstances that seem to pop up um, every year uh, that, you know, unfortunate, but the, these things happen. Um, as a reminder, uh, every club is a little bit different. Uh, you may request bye weeks during the season. Um, uh, by default, every team has two. You may have more than two bye weeks if you want. Um, the sooner you can give us that information on your bye weeks, the more likely that we can honor those. Um, if something unusual comes up during the season that was not expected, contact us as quickly as you can. Um, our default answer is we try to work with you to make sure that your teams can participate. Uh, but the key to that is we have to be in communication with you when something something odd happens. And sometimes what that odd thing is, the, the most common thing is weather. Um, weather may close your school, may make it impossible for your club to meet one week. Um, these things happen, we understand. Um, we will work with you to make sure your team can participate. But again, the key is you have to let us know so we can work with you to, to do that. Uh, one thing that we uh, don't really uh, uh, allow for, though, is um, ma making such a circumstance for is if a athlete is sick. Um, in a game, the top four athletes, regardless as to who they are, count as your team score. Um, I always give the analogy in a basketball game, if your starting point guard is out sick, you have to re rely on your bench, your, your second string uh, point guard, to, to, to start, to st step up. It's the same thing as this. Um, unfortunately, if an athlete is sick, um, hope he or she gets better, but the game still goes on. If, during a, if, if you have two games during a week, this will be caused by a scheduling change. Um, the only reason why it would be would be is if it's uh, uh, the West scheduling change. Uh, you do have to shoot the two courses of fire uh, separately. 
And please note uh, that we do have in the league program the ability to cancel a game if necessary. We would only do this under a extreme condition. Uh, thankfully, last fall we did not have to do that, um, but we have had situations, uh, especially in the fall leagues, where um, uh, schools got canceled due to um, uh, damage caused by hurricanes. Um, so please be aware that can happen. We try not to, but it can happen. All right, awards. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite things about the New Shooter League is how we present awards. Because this is the New Shooter League, we try to emphasize not just competition, but also participation and improvement. Uh, we have equal, uh, we put equal weights on all three of those aspects for the league itself. Um, as far as participation awards go, which we're again we're going to be trying to sending out this week, every league, excuse me, every team will get two league posters. We have a very cool poster this year, and every athlete from each team will receive a participation, excuse me, a participation pin, and a sticker for his or her rifle. And again, we're going to try to send this out on Friday for you. Then at the end of the season, uh, we're going to present medals for each of the athletes from each team that meets two of the three. To the three criteria. First, if your team earns five or more, more wins during the season, that's the first criteria. Second, if your team participates in all eight games, this is probably the easiest uh, of the three three components. Just shoot every week, and you'll you'll uh, get this check checked off. And then number three, if your team shows improvement during the season. So, do two of these two of these three criteria, and we will award your team. And if you notice, um, because of the participation, because of the improvement, it is possible that every team, every athlete, will get an award at the end of the season. This hasn't happened yet, but it is possible, and we hope someday that uh, we hope someday that that actually will happen. And then finally, uh, for the team itself, we will send a banner for the teams that meet meet this uh, criteria as well. So that third criteria, showing improvement, how do we quantify that? And what we do, we, we take your team's eight scores during the season, and we do go ahead and drop the low, low, lowest score just to uh, just in case there was some type of um, abnormality with it. And we use Excel's Linus functions. Basically, it's a um, it's a statistical method that calculates points per game improvement. Um, and we surveyed you, the coaches, a couple of seasons ago, and you said five points per game was the metric that you wanted to, to meet. And so any team that has five points per game improvement during the season, that will uh, tick off that checkbox uh, for awards. And just as a note, and you wonder how easy or difficult that, uh, that metric is to meet, in the Air Rifle League last season, uh, teams improved by 9.6 points. Uh, so you do have to work at it. It's not a given. Uh, but it is very much achievable, especially for the teams who practice uh, outside of the, their league games. Uh, for those of you who have been in the league uh, for a while, you know that we send out press releases each week. And one of our, because one of our goals in the league is to provide greater positive attention to the sport, um, we send this out not just to you, the coaches, but if you provided a, a newspaper, we will also send it out to the editor of that newspaper. And a lot of, uh, especially local newspapers, will pick up on these press releases. Um, it's a great way to promote uh, uh, your team and the sport to your community. And we will we'll also make the press releases available on our results center, and we will be uh, uh, posting information on our Facebook page as well. All right. Along with the um, uh, press releases, another way that we help try to help promote your team is through team photos. Uh, we do require team photos uh, for each team in the league. Uh, we not only put these up on our Facebook page, we not only put, post it up on our Result Center and our uh, uh, National League's website, uh, but if any um, uh, newspaper editors, uh, reporters, ask for photos of your team. We provide them to the media as well. And once you have your team photo, you can send it in to league at uh, orionscoringsystem.com, and we will post, post, post it from there. All right, uh, team coaches, here is the summary of what you are responsible for during the league itself. 
Uh, of course, be familiar with the league program and rules. Uh, once again, these are available, uh, the league program itself, and a link to the rules is up on our website, nationalleagues.com. You are responsible for conducting each game according to the National Standard 3 Position Era for Rules. Again, if you follow the uh, range command script that we send you, you will be doing so. Uh, you are responsible for scheduling each game during the time frame of the week, Monday through Sunday. I leave it up to each coach to decide what is the best time for your club, uh, but you do have to schedule it during that week. Uh, you are responsible for the correct use of Orion. Uh, we here at Choose Technology will help you learn how to use the system correctly, but at the end of the day, it is your, respons it is your responsibility to use it correctly. Uh, it is your responsibility to contact the league administrator if you have any outstanding circumstances. Again, usually the biggest situation here is weather. Uh, if you have weather, weather costs delayed, we will work with you, uh, but we have to know about it. And then finally, the honesty and, and integrity of your team. Um, unfortunately, this is a bullet point where I wish I didn't have to remind the coaches of this. Um, and unfortunately, every year we catch one or two teams who uh, decide... Um, that this wasn't important. Um, uh, we do have random checks on the uh, tar uh, targets that are scored. We do have random checks uh, to make sure that you are complying with the rules. Um, you know, hey, look, um, w w as a coach, one, one of your jobs is to teach sportsmanship, um, ethical responsibility to, to your athletes. Follow through with that. Um, it's, it's best for you, it's best for the league, it's best for everybody. Uh, that's you know, simple part of sport. And as I just mentioned, uh, we do randomly check targets each week to make sure that they did get scored correctly. We do check th that penalties got applied correctly. And if we um, see anything unusual, uh, we do have it uh, that we can assess additional penalties if uh, the rules weren't followed. If you have questions on how to apply any particular print penalty, the most common one being extra shot fired, um, feel free to call our offices and we will assist you with that. Uh, one of the um, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, when we first ran the league, you know, not, a number of years ago, uh, we had coaches asking us for the contact information of the other coaches, and what what they wanted to do is to reach out and basically say, "Hey, congratulations, good luck, what have you." And uh, this was really a good opportunity to promote sportsmanship between the teams as well as you know co camaraderie, and. At the time, we didn't have a way to me a mechanism to do that. Um, but today, we have it in the league program that uh, we will release uh, your contact information to every other coach in the uh, in the league. Um, this contact information is going to be your email address and the and your phone number, and we will send this out uh, probably next Tuesday, next Monday or Tuesday, at the start of the uh, of the league. Please, please, please use this information for the purpose it was provided. Namely, uh, to promote sportsmanship between teams, to wish each other luck. If your team uh, lost, to wish the other team, uh, to the other team uh, congratulations. Um, this is why we provide information and we are relying on each coach to um, um, honor that. And of course, if you do not want your information shared with the other coaches, we will honor that. Let us know. We are happy to opt you out of this uh, spreadsheet information. All right, we are closing up towards the end of the presentation. A uh, couple hints to success. Uh, remember that teams, you're ranked not just by your wins and losses, but by your, um, excuse me, um, uh, you're not just ranked by your wins and losses, but by also your uh, uh, league average. One of the keys to the success, though, is to avoid taking a did, did not start a DNS. This has a negative effect on your league points. So a simple way to just make sure your team succeeds is to compete every week. Um, even if your team is not doing badly, just by competing, you will be, doing, you, you will be getting uh, those uh, uh, necessary points. Make sure that you check, double-check, 
our website, the emails that we send out, that your scores did get turned in correctly. This, unfortunately, is one of the most common mistakes coaches make is they don't check. Uh, so make sure that you do. Um, this one of the easiest ways to avoid a DNS. And then don't get discouraged if your team drops a game or two at the start of the season. Uh, Wins at the end of the season count just as much as wins at the uh, end of the season. Um, in league play, one of the things that is very common is the teams that end up doing well overall are not the teams that start out well. They're, they're the teams that finish well. Uh, so don't get discouraged. Keep practicing. Keep getting better. And towards the end of the season, you will see improvement. And, of course, um, one of the keys to success is simply to work hard every week. Um, one of the most amazing things when we conduct the surveys at the end of the season is how much coaches believe the league helps their athletes get better. Uh, so use this as a motivational factor for your athletes. Encourage them to uh, practice and uh, you not only get better during, this, during the league itself, but uh, get better uh, overall. All right, uh, I thank you for attending today's coaches meeting. Um, I will stay on the line in case there are additional questions. I currently do not see any additional questions, but I will wait until um, anything comes up. For those of you who are going to uh, drop, uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, we will be sending the participation awards out on Friday and the league starts on Monday. So good luck to each of you. Um, once again, if you have questions, uh, you can ask it now or you can call into our um, uh, uh, help helpline. Uh, you see, see the number here and we'll be happy to uh, answer your individual questions. I just got asked by one of my colleagues um, to remind you, the coaches, if you haven't done so already, uh, the email that we sent out this morning, there was a link to check your registration. Uh, please check that your team name is spelled correctly. And we also have your bye weeks down listed correctly. Uh, if you need to make changes, you can give us a call. Or if you go back to the original registration email that you received when you registered, there is a link to update that information. Um, any changes to your team name or to any changes to your team name will not be possible once the league starts. I guess one other reminder is um, <clears throat> the reason why we have everybody check their uh, team names uh, before Wednesday is on Wednesday we will actually be creating the schedule uh, for the first two weeks. So uh, you can look for that information uh, released later this week. Excuse me, we're going to be releasing that on Thursday, not on Wednesday. Uh, we'll, um And again, if anybody has any questions, you may type it into the uh, chat box on the YouTube uh, uh, live chat window. All right, coaches, it uh, doesn't seem like any additional questions are going to come in. So I'm going to go ahead and end the stream for the moment. Um, uh, once again, thank you for joining us today. I wish each of you good luck. The league is a great opportunity to help motivate your team to uh, get better. And I hope that uh, works for all of you. And remember, uh, the awards that we have um, are not just based on competition, but is also based on participation and improvement. So it's something that every team can achieve. I uh, just have to uh, work hard to get there. Uh, thank you very much. Good luck to you. And I hope everybody has a successful season.